Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back on the bracket breakdown. Gonna be breaking down the is this the East bracket, right? No, the Midwest bracket. Uh, with Virginia and Michigan State, we'll go ahead and just move Michigan State and Virginia on. Not having any of those upsets going. Let's take a little deeper and look or deeper look inside Texas Tech and Butler. Both have three wins against the top 25. Texas Tech has had a few more opportunities, three more opportunities to be exact. Uh, it's kind of a mirror flip. Um, Texas Tech has a better RPI, um, but Butler has a better BPI, and they're pretty close. Butler's BPI being a 35, Texas Tech RPI being a 34. Um, Texas Tech plays a lot more closer games. Butler, they have roughly the same record, um, but Butler tends to score a little bit more points. They give up a little bit more points. Um, actually, Butler scores eight more points. That's not a little bit more. Uh, like a Butler a little bit more as I look at this. Uh, Butler beat Purdue. Uh, they lost to Villanova twice, lost to Xavier twice, lost to Miami, beat Seton Hall. Somehow they beat Seton Hall twice, and they lost to Providence three times. <laughs> they also beat Cincinnati by two. Now, where are, where are those three top 25 wins? I guess Providence... In, says, no, no, they lost to Providence three times. Uh, Purdue and who, uh, Purdue, who else? Okay, that's a little bit weird. Um, they both um, did decent on down the stretch. Texas Tech seven and five, Butler six and, or eight and four. Uh, both did relatively similar in the conference. A really pretty even matchup in my opinion. Uh, but I think uh, Todrick Gotcher and Texas Tech get it done. It's Colin Dunham, Butler. Um, Purdue and Arkansas Little Rock. I know very little about Arkansas Little Rock, except that I knew they had a good record at 29-4. Why is this not loading? Hello? There we go. Uh, Purdue with a pretty high RPI and BPI, higher, higher than I thought. They were 2-2 two two against the top 25. Arkansas Little Rock didn't play anybody in the top 25. They play some pretty good defense, but don't have a high-powered offense. Went 10-2 and two down the stretch. Um, they lost to Texas Tech by 12, they beat San Diego State, a nice win, and they beat Tulsa, two pretty good wins for them. Uh, Purdue did a lot of splitting, split with Michigan State, split with Maryland, lost Indiana, lost Iowa twice, beat Wisconsin twice, beat Pittsburgh, lost to Butler, and then split the regular season with Michigan and then beat them in the tournament, in the conference tournament. Uh, Arkansas Little Rock, a little bit of a dark sleeper, uh, for me in this one, but I'm gonna have to stick with, uh... Purdue Boilermakers, and then we move on to Iowa State and Iona. Iowa State 2-8 and eight against the top 25, a BPI rank of 21, or BPI of 18, RPI 21. Iona with an R, a BPI over 100, uh, went 16-4 and four in conference, but they go 11-1 and one down the stretch compared to Iowa State going 5-7. and seven. Iowa State, notable, they split with Kansas, they split with Oklahoma in the regular season before having that nice, that, that was a great game to watch, the one in the tournament between Oklahoma and Iowa State, they got beat by West Virginia twice, lost at Texas A&M, split with Texas, lost by one to Iowa, beat Colorado, and lost to Baylor twice, Iona's notable um, games, they got smashed by Oregon State, they beat Monmouth twice, nice wins there against Monmouth, uh, Akron lost by 14, Valpo they lost by 25, and they got smashed by Tulsa. I'm going to roll with uh, Iowa State and Georgia's Niang. Um, though Iona is a hot upset pick for a lot of people, Seton Hall and Gonzaga, one of the tougher games to call in the tournament. Gonzaga 0-2 against top 25, 3-3 for Seton Hall. Notable, Seton Hall took 2 out of 3 against Xavier, went 1 for 3 against Nova, uh, they beat Providence twice, uh, they beat Wichita State, but they did lose to Butler twice. Those are kind of two big losses, or the two losses to Butler. Uh, for Gonzaga, they lost SMU, Texas A&M, Arizona. They don't have a lot of notables on here about wins. They just lost SMU, Texas A&M, Arizona. They went one for three against St. Mary's, and they beat UConn. UConn, a nice win. Uh, Wilcher and Zabonis going to be huge against Seton Hall. Pretty much all depends on how they do, but we are rolling Seton Hall. Utah, Fresno State. I'm interested to get a little bit deeper look into Utah. A 9 in the RPI. Interesting. I didn't think they would be that high. Fresno State 0-1 against the top 25. 3-5 for Utah. Uh, they both like to score. They roughly have about the same points per game as allowed and uh, that they score. 
Uh, notable wins for Fresno State. They had a close game at Oregon. Had a close, eh, not that close against Arizona. And then they went two and one against the against San Diego State. Not bad. Uh, Utah lost three times to Oregon. Lost by 24 to Miami. Uh, they took two or three against Cal. They beat Duke. Uh, they split with Oregon State. They beat Arizona. They beat Colorado twice, and they beat Texas Tech by 10. I just don't like Fresno State in this matchup against Utah. Um, I would have liked San Diego State to probably get in over Fresno. But, you know, got to take what you get in the tournament, and we got Fresno. Uh, Dayton actually has a pretty high RPI at 20. Uh, Syracuse has a roughly the same RPI there, or BPI, one above the BPI of Dayton. 2-5 uh, and five against the top 25 for Cuse, and... Uh, 0-3 for Dayton Notables. You got Iowa for Dayton. Xavier, they got they got embarrassed by Xavier. Uh, they lost twice to St. Joe's. Split with Bonaventure. Uh, beat VCU. They beat Monmouth, a decent win. Uh, they lost to Chattanooga, and they beat Vandy. Um, uh, Syracuse, they lost twice to North Carolina. Lost to Virginia. Lost to Miami. They beat Texas A&M. That's a good win. They beat Duke, another good win. They got beat by Louisville, and they beat Notre Dame. So they do have um, they do have some pretty pretty good wins for the Qs. Um, I'm gonna stick with uh, Syracuse, and that sets up Michigan State Syracuse. Let's take a look at Michigan State. They went five and one against the top 25. I believe their only loss would be to. Um, is it to Indiana? Was it, uh, no, it was to Purdue. They split it with Purdue. Um, but they beat Kansas, very good win. They beat Louisville, another good win. Beat Maryland twice, really good. They split with Purdue, uh, but they, they did lose to Purdue in the regular season and then beat them in the tournament. They lost to Iowa twice. They blasted Indiana, and they beat Providence. Uh, for, we already looked at the Qs, um... Michigan State playing really well down the stretch, going 11-1. and one. I cannot pick against them. That brings on Seton Hall. I believe Isaiah Whitehead takes down Utah uh, pretty much on his own. I like Isaiah Whitehead. Um, one, of, one of the more intriguing players to watch in all of college basketball. Um, he's going to shoot. He's going to go. He's going to attack the basket. He's, he, he's, he's not going to play passive. He's going to be aggressive. He... I just enjoy I enjoy watching uh, Isaiah Whitehead, uh, which brings us to Iowa State Purdue. I like Niang um, pulling Swanigan out. I think Niang has a really nice game against Caleb Swanigan, um, who was I believe supposed to go to Michigan State and then he flipped his pick to Purdue. Um, but uh, Iowa State, I, I, I like them against Purdue. I like. Um, Morris and I like I like the guards for Iowa State against the guards of Purdue. I got them taking it there, and then I've got Virginia in an extremely close one with Texas Tech. Uh, Tubby Smith almost gets the upset, but unable to to complete the upset of Virginia. Iowa State Virginia, an interesting game. Um, I think Iowa State locks down Malcolm Brogdon and scores just enough points to take down Virginia. And Seton Hall, Michigan State, it's a shootout between Denzel Valentine and Isaiah Whitehead. They each go for 25-plus points, and uh, Denzel Valentine gets the win with a triple-double. Isaiah Whitehead not able to get it done in the assist or rebound category like Denzel Valentine, which sets up Iowa State, Michigan State. Uh, Denzel Valentine versus George Niang, and... Uh, I don't think Iowa State has what it takes to stop Michigan State. I think they will get their points in the paint. I don't necess I don't love Michigan State's big men, uh, but I think they have enough to get it done against Iowa State. Moving Michigan State into the Final Four, breaking down that bracket a little bit. Not too, pretty much all hold held held steady in this bracket. Not too big of surprise. I I don't like this bracket. It's my least favorite bracket. Um, I don't think they did a great job. Um, with putting people into this bracket. I would have liked to see Kentucky maybe in this bracket, maybe the Kentucky-Indiana 4-5 in this bracket, or um, maybe the Texas A&M 3-14 matchup swapped with the Utah. I would have liked that a little bit better, but um, you got to 
you got to roll with what you're uh, with what you're given. Uh, so that is going to do it for this episode, guys. Three of the four final four teams. We'll go over the final four in the national championship in the next episode in the bracket breakdown bracket. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys then. We'll be going over the Oregon Oklahoma bracket. So I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.